coffee. Man, what is in this? Oh no. Hey guys, Sean here from the Crafty Android. Thanks for watching and welcome to part three of our custom trap jaw build. Today we're gonna paint, weather, and detail the figure. So stick around. All right guys, here he is, the completed trap jaw figure. I'm gonna go over a few details before we get into the priming and painting process. I added the loop on the top of trap jaw's helmet that's commonly found on his figures. This is the completed arm with hydraulics I added to make it look more mechanical. Now, if you remember the Silly Putty Egg from my second video, this is it after I sanded it, shaped it, and added some details. Here on the front of the arm, I added a magnet so I can snap his weapons on. He normally has his skull and crossbones on his belt, so I sculpted one on. Also on the sides of his belt, he has hooks to hang his weapons. I sculpted in some big steroid veins in his left arm and his neck. This is his deadly arsenal. Here you have his hook, his blaster, and his claw. Noise! Boop! <laughs> this is the boots to scoves. I'm using plaster, so I'm gonna tape off the sides so the plaster doesn't leak off the edges. I'm mixing the plaster on a high-tech paper plate. Now we take the plaster and spread it around. Can you smell what I'm cooking? It's rocks. That's enough rocks. Aww. Time to peel the tape off. Time to prime everything with the primer. Spray the boost! I'm going to use some flat black paint for a good undercoat once the primer dries. I'm not doing the base thing again. I'm starting off with the skin. What I'm doing is a dark blue undercoat, and then after that, I'm going to go on top of the lighter blue coat, and then after that, even lighter blue coat, and then that's gonna make all the features pop and give the figure depth. When you start with your darker undertone, you wanna make sure you get it in all the creases and recesses. Now I'm going over the top of the figure with an even lighter blue shade, and I'm using a dry brushing technique just to hit the high points of all the muscles. Now when you go over your darker shade with your lighter shades, you want to incrementally lighten your shades. You don't want to make it too drastic because then it's not going to flow and it's not going to blend well. And here you can see I'm going even lighter. Basically what you're doing is once you hit the high points with those lighter shades, you're giving the illusion of the light bouncing off the high points of the body. Now I'm using a dry brush technique with my lightest shade of blue and I'm using a downstroke on all the high points because I want to give the illusion that the light is coming down from above. Yes, splendid. Now I'm moving on to Trapjaw's face. I'm using a black undercoat to hit all the creases and all the wrinkles in his face. And then I'm gonna use the same technique I did for the body, but this time using green going from an olive drab to lighter greens. Now I'm starting off with the base color of olive drab, 
and then I'll lighten it up with a little bit of white and eventually it'll be a pale green color. Now I'm going in with the lighter tones. Now for the final color, I'm going with the pale green and I'm doing the same technique, just using a downstroke on all the high points of the face. I had a lot of pale green left over from Trapjaw's face, so I didn't want to waste the paint. So I decided to go ahead and use it on his belt. I'm not quite using a dry brush technique, but I'm going with a little bit less paint because I don't want to get it in all the cracks and holes. <laughs> I said cracks and holes. I still had a little bit more of that pale green left, so I mixed in a little bit of sap green to brighten it up and give it a little bit different tone and kind of break up all the greens that are on the figure. Trapjaw's helmet isn't a bright red, it's more of a kind of a red with a violet hue to it, so that's exactly what I did. I took the red and mixed in a little bit of violet to give it the right color. And again, I had some extra red paint, so I'm using it to paint the gash on his chest. His belt looked a little too flat with that pale green, so I'm going over and dry brushing a little bit of olive drab, and then uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of light brown on it too to kind of dirty it up. Rub and buff. This stuff is awesome. Forget silver paint, guys. Use rub and buff. It is amazing. Now it's time to paint his furry underwears. I don't. I'm gonna go over with a dry brush technique with a darker brown color and a lighter brown. Yeah, just dry brush it and do whatever looks right, guys. Now you're gonna do dirt wash. Some folks call it a deer tay wash. I call it a dirt wash with water down black and brown paint. You just rub it in all the lines and wipe off all the extra. Mm -hmm. Now with the smallest brush I have, I'm going in and painting his eyes yellow. And if I get a little bit on his eyelids, I'm not too worried about it because I can always go back and touch that up with some dark green. Trapjaw doesn't have big like anime pupils, so <laughs> I'm using a really fine point pencil and just making little pinpointed black pupils. One thing I didn't get filmed because my camera kind of crapped out on me is I dry brushed some dark gray over all the black areas and then dry brushed a little bit of steel. And now I'm going over with a rust color because I want him to look a little more rusty and battle worn. And to keep everything consistent, I want to make sure that I do uh, proper weathering on all his weapons too. And now to mount his shoulder pauldron, I'm mixing some two-part epoxy and I'm going to put that on the inside. I have a dowel rod on the inside of a shoulder pauldron and a hole drilled in the back of his shoulder so I can go ahead and mount that and it's going to stay secure. With the extra epoxy I've left over, I'm going to put it on his eyes and that's going to give his eyes a glossy look. Very nice. And I still have a little bit left over, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the epoxy into the scope of his blaster, and that's gonna give the effect that there's glass in it. In the second video, I mentioned that I was gonna put staples in the gash on his chest. Yeah, these are a pain. Uh, they're just basically paper clips I bent into shape, and now I'm sticking them in the holes in his chest. So I decided to fabricate a support harness for Trapjaw's right mechanical shoulder. And what I'm using is, uh, I'm using a necklace strap you can get from your craft store in the necklace section. And it's uh, it's not a real leather, it's a fake leather, but it looks real enough for these small figures.
Oddly enough, I found these little chrome studs in the uh, scrapbooking section of my local craft store. He looks so metal. <laughs> All right, guys, this is one of my favorite parts with any build that I do. Take a little bit of that rub and buff and you dry brush it on the high areas and you get little scrapes and scratches and it looks excellent. Now guys, you can go overboard with this stuff. So use it a little bit sparingly and just go with, you know, most of the high weathered areas and uh, some of the parts that would, you know, seem to get a lot of use. Obviously the weapons are gonna be used a lot. So I'm gonna do a lot of weathering on those. Figure's all done. Time to finish up the base. All right, guys, here we are finally onto the base. I'm starting with a dark brown mm -hmm. and then I'll work up to a lighter shade and still a lighter shade from there and eventually getting to where I use the lightest shade dry brushing it on. I decided about halfway through that all the browns was a little monochromatic. So what I did is I took a little bit of dark green and put it in the low lying areas to simulate moss and then I'll go back with a little bit of lighter green and then I have some fake moss that I'm actually gonna sprinkle into those areas. Here I'm painting all the skulls I have sculpted into the base. I'm starting out with like a medium gray and then I'm gonna work up to a lighter gray, dry brushing that over it and then I'm gonna dry brush it with uh, kind of my own mixture of a, a bone white, which is some white, a touch of yellow and a touch of tan. Same thing as before, guys. I'm just dry brushing with my lightest color over all the high areas of the skulls and the bone fragments. And yeah. Now I'm just brushing on some diluted wood glue and I'm gonna put in some fake moss. All right guys, that completes our trap jaw build. Thanks for sticking around. If you enjoy my content, remember to like, share, and subscribe for more crafty Android builds. And always remember, stay crafty.